Well, salutations, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TWR, the Thousand Week Wreck, which we're playing that beautiful Republic of China. So, last time I asked you guys whether or not we should invade Cambodia using console commands, and overall, the support was said, yes, we should. So, I just got to war with them, and I believe I've called it in Vietnam as well. Uh, yeah, and we've immediately just begun an assault on the enemy's positions. Hopefully, they go relatively well. Over here, probably not so well, but that's okay. A couple of the comments include... Oh, I can't exactly remember. Uh, but one of them was that the leader of Germany right now, Milka, was actually one of the, like, Minister of Security or Defense or something in East Germany in our timeline, so that's actually really cool. I thought it sounded a little familiar. Milky. Milky. Hell, Milky. Cool. Well, we've just invested in heavy industry as well. So my goal for the rest of this campaign is to get through the focuses and see what happens, if anything, if anything does. Coastal development... Dong Bai Industrial Revival Inland Development. Let's do some in, in, inland development. Our coast shimmer at night, it is said, with the fires of industry and commerce and life itself. But we must not, must not be fooled into the delusion that China has grown equally. Our great hinterland suffers from poor infrastructure, endemic poverty, sustained bureaucratic incompetence. Sustained efforts must be taken to develop the infrastructure and industry of our inland provinces, and with discretionary funding from the executive yawn forthcoming, these efforts will begin today, which is a great, great thing. And we are just kind of shrugging. Cambodia, which was honestly to be expected. They've lost a lot of guys. We've not lost almost pretty much anyone. And we need now their capital underneath us, which would be great. And before we end the war, how about we go straight to war economy? This way we can build ourselves up even faster, faster, faster. And there goes the Kingdom of Cambodia. Thank you for playing Kingdom of Cambodia. Uh, let's see, do that first. There we go. Got enough score. There we go. We'll probably just release him as a puppet. Unless someone has cores on this area, which I don't think they do. Which is fine. Let's go ahead and release him as a puppet now. Cool. Uh, a loyal regime. A loyal, loyal regime would be good. Economic outlook. Oh, led by pretty much the same dude. We canceled the Lunis with us. The Vietnamese did. So be it. Not a big deal. Last time we also took a Macau. Uh, Macau, I think that's how you pronounce it. So we took them over. They're under us, which is a great thing. And now we've expanded the Beijing, or not, not Beijing Pact, but the Nanjing Act a little bit more. Pretty much all of Southeast Asia over here is under us, except for, of course, like Malaya. It is what it is. I'd like to go to war with them, but we'll see what happens. They're currently fighting Romania. Uh, I would like eventually to take out Hong Kong. Hopefully we can get them, but fighting the Toronto courts might not be in our best uh, opinion or option for right now. You know what? Since we already used Cons Commands once, I want your opinion as well. This campaign won't last an extremely long time. So in the meantime, should I use Cons Commands to take out the Republic of Korea? Maybe? Maybe not. I think they're guaranteed by the U.S., right? They're guaranteed by the U.S. Maybe we'll take out the Russian Republic. It's up to you guys. I'll let you guys decide whether we should do that or not. Just because in the Thousand Week Reich, we're just limited as to what we can do besides our focuses, which I somewhat agree with, but somewhat don't agree with. It's it's an okay idea, but there needs to be at least a little bit more so we can, you know, do a little bit more and get be a little bit more aggressive. So, I mean, yeah, there's a the whole thing about Hong Kong there, but still, you know, I would prefer something else, maybe a little bit more. Just a little bit more, maybe. Uh, let's go and build up infrastructure here. As well as build up some more civilian factories. We can build, build, build. That'd be good. Good, good, good. Let's get grow, grow. Let's get one more going. One more line going. That'd be good for us. Because we're doing pretty darn well now. We got plenty of fuel. Actually, we have plenty of fuel. Ooh, we have a ship. We have another destroyer. Very nice. We got some inland development. Cheap labor. Sure, why not? One advantage of our rural indus industrial efforts is that the workforce we are drawing upon are desperate for work and chronically financially insecure. This means, of course, that we will need to pay them far less than their fat-bellied, complacent counterparts from the cities. Our companies are already reporting massive profit opportunities from the systematic exploitation of the countryside. A small sacrifice for the workers, but invaluable for our, our export economy, to be sure. How great. We're thinking of everyone here. Thinking of them well? Maybe not. But we're still thinking of them, regardless. Cool. And let's see, how's the war going against Romania? It's completely stagnant. What I'm really interested in, though, is to see if Germany has any decisions to go further to war. The anti-fascist ministry, they've got... what else? National... wow. National purges. Woo! Uh, enforced reconstruction, protecting the proletariat, Austrian problem. Also, though, another comment was like, why is this Zavodoslavia? Apparently, that was one comment from yesterday, like... Zavodoslavia is supposed to be like a union of, like, was it West Slavic people or something like that? I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, they're Marxist-Leninists, so I'm not really sure what to say about that. Ideology through pamphlets. Um, okay, they do have a little bit of support for Social Democrats, but not really. Uh, ooh, military construction too. That sounds very nice this time of year. Uh, things three. 
Resource efficiency gain. We could do that. 58. Maybe a radar. We could do that, but... Any? No, we can't do that. Ooh, doing this would take way too long. I already went with this one. Muzzle break. So we, we went with support weapons too. I guess we could get infantry anti-tank. We'll just make our infantry as best as we can. Since doing our land action will take forever to do. Wow. Romania has gone really far. They even own Novi Sad. Novi Sad? Novi Sad? Why don't you just give that to, Salve to Serbia or like Yugoslavia? That makes a little bit more sense than seeing you extend that far. Oof. They like to extend themselves. Shipping, no, no, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe that's okay. I mean, the Eurasia Aviation, that stuff is all okay, it's just not that ideal. More armor is okay, reliability is not bad. And more reliability and soft attack is not bad either, but we'll see what happens. Let's see, so we need more artillery and support equipment. Let's see if we can focus on a little bit more on that artillery and support equipment, there you go. Artillery. We need more resources, too. Hmm. You can probably lower with export focus to limit exports. Would that help out? Yes. A little bit. That definitely help out with aluminum. Just a wee bit, though. Hmm. 5% more construction speed. Lower that. Hmm. I suppose we could do that. Why not? Oh, we can't do that yet because we need more political power. That's okay, though. Cheap labor. How about the coastal development, though? Coastal traffic was once frowned upon by the dynasties that preceded us and viewed, it, viewed as a security threat to the nation as a whole. It's time to set aside that foolish delusion, for in the absence of a unified naval presence, our coastal trading network has thrived. Let us lean into and profit off this opportunity. With a few grease palms and many, many building contracts, we will build the backbone for a massive coastal trading infrastructure, connecting Shanghai and Guangzhou with a necklace of floating steel. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now you can pack looking pretty good. Canada, USA. Now, oh, oh, there's Patton. I have not seen his uh, portrait yet. What is that? Anti-sub warfare. Cool. Motorization. I'm joined with my cat who would like to leave my room right now. Bee bink. Bye, bee bink. Cool. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, Efran Gonzalez Luna. Why not? Support weapons 2. Cool. Uh, support weapons 3. Awesome. It is 58, so we're not doing too badly here. I suppose I could lower this just by a little bit. So we have just a few more resources to work with. Just not that many more, but a few are always nice. One, two, oh, three, huh? Not bad. Keep making some of that stuff. That'd be good. Get maybe a few more military factories as well. So one, two, three. That's fine with me. Shigatsi? Shigatse? Oh, they are suffering a little bit of attrition here, which is why we're building up the infrastructure. It's not that bad, though. 1.7. Oh, man. Their organization looks like it's... Not very good. Oh boy, not very, very, very good. That's okay, as long as we keep building up more factories, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. Mm, yeah, we'll do that one too. That'd be nice. Uh, does Korea have a unique focus tree? They might... Oh, reject authoritarianism. It doesn't look like they do that. No, they... Oh, hold on, they actually kind of do. Yeah, Korea does have a unique focus tree. I was not expecting that. Yeah, holy cow. They got protests, protests suppressed, re-resigned... Uh, they went with a conservative, liberal victory, power to the people, a true republic, huh? Left-wing victory, the military stands down, or military coup, martial law, self-parliament, suspend rights, an army within a state. An army with a state, oh boy. Authoritarian system, huh? Or oh, Red Korea, that sounds like a lot of fun. Red Korea, anarchist direction, moderate direction, the way forward. Huh. Break the chains, huh? Danish monarchy's been restored, wow. Coastal development, very nice. How about we grab? Eh, that seems okay. Dongbai Industrial Revival. The Dongbai region languished for lack of infrastructure and demand following the chaos of the war. Factories lay broken and empty, refineries set silent in the forest, and villages were all but empty of workers. With their efforts to prioritize the northeast, we are now experiencing something resembling a rebirth. Our industrial firms are rapidly expanding operations across Jilin and Heilongjiang, and the heart, black heart of Manchuria glows anew with the fire of embers. That seems like a good thing to happen. Uh, can we edit our divisions to make them any better? There's currently 20 combat width, and we can't afford to put another one of these on. How much artillery do we have? We have none. So I'm going to throw on engineers, because we have still none of support equipment. So we'll throw on the artillery, actually, instead. There you go. Now we need even more. That's not ideal. Hmm. Yeah, we could really use it a lot more. Go ahead and put this down to three, then. We need less rubber. We still need more aluminum, though. Oh, so bad. So bad. We're trying to make carriers and destroy our holes, but we'll see what happens. Definitely see what happens. We do want to liberate Hong Kong, but I'm not sure when we're going to do that. I, 
at the very least, if we can't build up a good navy, that's some really thick Okinawa, though. That's really thick in my mind. But, if we can't do that, then at least let us have a pretty good army. A really good infantry army that can help defeat, or at least defend, China from everyone else. That'd be nice. Right, so what are you guys up to now? Oh, you know what? Let's give it an intelligence agency. It costs 10? Well, we probably want that. NBIS. Let's do that. It's going to cost us some civilian factories. That's okay. Just because I want to know what's going on in Germany. I want to see what they're up to. Does the Free French Republic have anything? Air doctrines? I hope they can go to war or something. That'd be kind of nice. Please go to war. Someone please go to war. <laughs> Besides everyone fighting Romania, which is just kind of hanging out. Improve worker conditions. You know what? We'll do that too because I want more stability probably. Yeah, I want more stability. That'd be nice. So we're really hurting our political power right now. Or, I mean, civilian... Or just industry stuff. Industry stuff. 100%. There you go. Keep building. I'll supply down there now. Well, it's gotten much better. Much, much better. Anti tank is looking good. Artillery, not so much. Don't buy industrial revival. Cool. The factory of Asia. Yes, please. As our industrial penetration of the Northeast increases, so too does our bargaining power with the inter international firms that we do business with. Low prices, after all, present a unique form of bargaining power. Complex industrial machinery, composite canned goods, and even cars and armored vehicles. Nothing is beyond the reach of the Manchurian miracle, and all that can be done unto the cheap. Watch out, Westerner. The shelves will soon overflow with Chinese discounts. Wow, this is uh, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Let's get some uh, Type 57s, though. Look really nice. Ah, nice. You got the little Strahelm helmet. Cool. Pretty cool. I'm not sure that was, he was actually holding the right gun, but you know, that's just me. 151 factories, not bad. 15, 15, 1, not bad. Dal, Dalai, Dali. Created the group here. Very good, very good. Let's go ahead and grab some foreign department. Because we want to get some agents. Actually, yeah. Let me know. Should, should I invade the Russian Republic normally using Kant's commands? And maybe even the Kingdom of Nepal and Bhutan? And Bengal and Mysore. Should I do all that? Of course, India, of course, as well. Uh, I would like. You know what? Let me know. Because if we do that, we'll have a major conflict between us and India. The battle of the manpower. We have like quadruple their manpower and double their factories. They got a lot of fuel, though. How much fuel do we have? 200. Quarter million? Not bad. We, have, we might have more than them. Convoys, they might have more than us. Uh, let's see. Fleet, they have no fleet. Army-wise, 40 to 87 divisions, which is probably a little bigger than us. But just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's better. Cool. And where are my planes? They're still trying to make more planes. Okay. Are we done? You know, just train anyways. You, you, might, as well, you might as well just train. It might hurt our fuel for a little bit, but that's actually okay with me for now. Just because I want to make sure that we get enough... Um... Naval XP. I, my brain just stopped working there. Holy cow. Brain, just, you gotta keep working. Factory of Asia, support opens 3. Go ahead and grab some M1948 Carl Gustavs. Ooh, recoilless rifle. I like recoilless rifles. Promises of peace. No, thank you. Region wide integration would be probably pretty good to get. I think, though, the next one we might choose is something else, though. Maybe, maybe not. The Factory of Asia, we love it. Encourage private businesses. Now, that is a nice focus description. Well, regardless, we're we'll just going to encourage stuff. Enrich some first. For a year, get more political power. Or fight it together. For a year, we alleviate poverty. Well, stability goes away. I want to get more political power, probably. But even more stability does give us more political power. Hmm. Fight it together. Hmm. Miracle in the Yang Tse. Cool. So if there's not if there's nothing else. I mean, with this focus tree, we will finish this up. We're gonna get through the currency situation, itch, situation, issue, situation. We'll condense American dom naval dominance maybe a little bit and blue skies over China. But the next episode in this campaign might be the last one, depending on whatever we can or cannot do. You know what? I'll probably. Oh, I can't even raise conscription. God dang it! It costs 187. Holy cow! Oh my goodness! <clears throat> ah, another division. Great. We all need a train. Go right ahead. Let's see. Nanjing is the capital, not Beijing. That's good to keep in mind. Oh my goodness, we need more tanks and everything like that. 
I still want to liberate it, but we'll liberate it after we go to maybe maybe go to war with India, maybe. Weekly war support, that'd be nice, but we don't need that. <clears throat> Currently get 1.4 every day, so come on, encourage private businesses, go, 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 go. Uh, we're building our infrastructure up quite a bit, quite nicely, actually. Do that too. Get another civilian factory just so we can build, build, build. I'd love to Did I already build all this stuff up? That's unusual. Okay, whatever. Get that next road. Good. We'll do that. Oh, we must have done all the infrastructure over here. Now it's really good infrastructure. Nice. Very, very nice. Nanjing packed. And, oh wait, we need to do this too, probably. There you go. Encourage private businesses, and you know what, let's do the fight together. We are engaged in a struggle that is far greater than the individual. At stake is nothing less than the soul and dignity of Chinese civilization itself. With every roll of copper wire from a dong bai factory, the whole of the nation prospers, and with every missed business deal, our ancestors groan with the loss. Why should the humble workers therefore bear the brunt of the struggle with nothing to show for it? Expanded labor protection laws will ensure that the Chinese nation is united in opportunity, welfare, and hope for the coming future. We'll see what happens. For a whole year, you get some more stability, but after that year, everything falls apart again. What is the USSR up to now? Please tell me Konef is doing something cool. This seems like a really awesome tree. Create Unit 17. What is that? Deep Space Research Arrays? Oh, that sounds kind of fun. Psychokinetic Research Experiments. The state shall grow. Project Rurik, huh? Chemical Carpet Bomb Tactics. Test our chemicals on Novosibirsk. Send the armor into the countryside. Deploy the dirty bombs. Op plan green sky and the TA's abomination. Well, that sounds like fun. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I definitely have to play as that nation eventually. Eventually. But not today. Anything else around here? Yeah, we'll do region wide integration because that's always that's always useful. Nice, keep building, keep building. That's awesome. 1.43 interception, machine decrypted stuff. Hmm. Oh, wait, what is that? Promises of Peace, yeah. Yeah, not really much going on. I'd love to know what they're doing over here, though. National Surveillance. Okay. Oh, what's happened to Slavia? Do they have any other go war goals against anyone? Ten-year ten -year plan. That's a long time for a plan. That is definitely ten years. Wow. Act from the eyes... Art from the eyes of Stalin. Out with the revisionists. And the sickle and the star. Well then, dealing with Sikorsky, German settlers. Well, after the German Civil War, there really doesn't seem to be a whole lot anyone can really do. I mean, except for America going to war with Italy, maybe, and Romania. There doesn't seem like an extreme amount of things to do. So, I guess we'll see what happens with your, with what you recommend if I go to war with other people or not. But I do want to finish up at least the industry tree by the end of this episode and begin the currency tree. I think that'd be kind of interesting just to see all the events that this mod, or all the events, all of the focuses that this mod offers. Fight together, great. And Miracle of the Young Tse, Chosen and Blossoms as it always has done. Its skies will glow with bellowing fires, rivers and seas with a shimmering or shimmer of mercantile wealth. The hearts of the people pump as one hundreds of millions rushing towards a single goal, the prosperity of the Republic and the peace of China. As the factories sprout across the mountains and valleys, let the world behold a Chinese miracle. One nation, our nation, like a dragon, ascends towards the clouds, let heaven tremble at the thought. We get more 10% more construction speed, uh, more cap, and get the second Nanjing decade. Cool. Wait, do we get early industrial stuff? What was that? Early industrial stuff. Uh, let's see. Left wing crackdown, harsh inflation, backward society, UN members, ongoing land reforms. Not bad. Plus 20% more monthly population. We get 27,000 people a month. Jesus. Oh, look at that. A lot of skulls. New white terror. Cult of Chiang. Martial law forever. <laughs> Casually having martial law. Uh, non Jing years. Not bad. I like that. But growth above principles. We lost stability. And political power, early industrial growth. Okay, that makes it better. Cool. And basic anti tank, anti tank, wartime rifles. Finally, we can replace those god awful things. And let's see, anything else here? Nope. 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 Alright, so we're done with that stuff for now. Let's get some uh, engineers. Some better engineers home. Really delightful. Any better light aircraft? Maybe carrier stuff? Why not? Stuff that's very, very useful for us. Region wide, might as well. Ooh, propaganda. No. Hey, we got 51% stability. That's not bad, though. That ain't bad. Happy 1959, my friends. It's a new year. New us. 
Hopefully we'll do really well. We got a lot of naval XP, which is really nice. So it'll help us out later on. Machine assisted decryption. There we go. Now let's get someone new. Uh, let's see. You are an escape artist, which I really like. Fai Yang. Yang Peng. Um, as much as I love the lips on you, this person also has lips. And he is not politically connected, so. We gotta do what we gotta do. 156 factories. It looks like we can always build a little bit more. Let's go to maybe a refinery. Why not? Chinese refineries are the best in the world. Which means we'll get a little bit more fuel, which would be nice. And we'll get a little bit more rubber, which will also be nice. There goes Novosibirsk. Goodbye, Novosibirsk. Oh, yeah. Now this is looking good. Maybe we won't go to war with them. I want to see them duke it out. Who's, please go kill each other off. Please kill each other off. Uh, we need more encryption and decryption. Hmm. So we can figure out what everyone else is doing. Promises of peace. Our army is just not big enough yet for us to really do things. We got enough guns, motorized. Support gun is coming along very nicely, as well as artillery. APCs as well. Main battle tanks. Somewhat coming along. Somewhat. Uh, aluminum. I wish we could make aluminum factories, but we cannot. 100%. Why not? Ah, another agent. Xiao Ji Wu. Smoocher Huzen Hu. Liao. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Nice. Slowly running out of fuel. Do that again, because you can. Cool. One, one, three. And we got another line going on. Our GDP is 140. Exactly 140. Not bad. Miracle on the Yangtze. Cool. And let's do the issue of currency. Oh, all politics in the end is it's economic in nature. If that is true, then China's political future looks gloomy indeed for the Chinese dollars, long subject to excessive supply and poor investment confidence, and spiraling downwards in value. If we do not act soon, we will face a collapse of the domestic economic confidence, a withdrawal of investments from the new nation, and all and all manner of instability. If we are to keep China, then we must start with the Yuan. There and only there can we build the foundations of a strong and independent nation, for this is not a nation bound to its finances as the teeth are to the gums. Huh. Okay, so then we could do government intervention. Modify harsh inflation by a little better deals. Stop printing. Rebuilding the trust. Issue treasury bonds. The currency reform. A stable currency. Or you just do non-intervention. Choosing to let inflation run its course is a viable option, but may come to bite us back in the butt. 70% chance of doing worse. 30% chance of doing a little better. Embrace the inflation. Oh, God. Floated economic growth. Uh, what we'll do is probably government intervention. That seems a little bit more enticing to do because we could have done the same thing with like land reforms and stabilizing the economy, but we we kind of got involved. Government staff for school is cool. Let's do another one. 230 days, not bad, not bad. We did become the leader of our faction or spy master, I should say, which was okay. Definitely okay. Now, one, two, three. Oh, and two. That's good. They'll be done pretty soon by May 14th in five days. That's really nice. Anything else here that we should know about? Artillery is looking really good. I would like to make 40 combat with divisions eventually, but we'll see what happens. We will definitely, definitely, definitely see what happens. Alright. That's almost done as well. That's good. And time for another civilian factory, because why not? Right there. Now I have to get the refinery done, and now we have minus 12 rubber. And it's just slightly more fuel. Better fighters, cool. It's almost 1960. Ah, wow, it's a, almost 1960. Drop tanks, why not? But more range, yes please. Uh, we could build one of these. Where? Ah, I know where. Oh, over here. There you go. Kyrgyzstan, cool. Kill each other off. See what happens. You should be able to take these guys out pretty quickly. They don't look too big up here. Good. Machine-assisted encryption. The currency problem. The silver yuan. Burning through generation of the nation's official currency, the ROC's currency was sabotaged time and time again by uncontrollable conditions. From the Japanese printing counterfeited FABI in an attempt at destroying our economy to the Chinese Civil War, where the communists printed their own currency in the occupied zones in our need to pay the troops with printed money. In other words, the moment monetary history of the modern republic has not inspired confidence. Thankfully, the current generation of official currency has proven to be more stable than its predecessors, or its ancestors, despite the fact that inflation is still a major problem that is barely under our control. I thought people used gold bars. 
Uh, government intervention. Under the conditions of the liberation war, we are forced to assume far more libertarian fiscal stances than H.H. H. Kung had ever wanted. To pay for the wartime bills and buffer our military industry, free flow printing of money became the normal became the norm for several dizzying years of inflationary pressure. Now that the consequences of this imprudence have become apparent, it is time to step in and actively construct the supply of currency to ensure stability of the currency in the short term. Nothing less than a full-on freeze in the financial cycle is necessary. It might be unpopular, but it might result in precipitous drops in consumer savings, and it might even, in a few localized areas, result in temporary depressions. But better medicine always works best, and if we do not act as a doctor, the whole nation will soon burn away in its fevers. We'll see what happens. Uh, I can't guarantee anything. Definitely see what happens, though. Yeah, everyone should train that if they need it. Man, the USSR is getting very, very violent. But I guess it's just USSR things. Now, from here on out, I'm... I want to... I'll probably throw on logistics companies. I like engineers. We probably could really honestly use engineers. Well, we'll use engineers instead of military police. Yeah, keep going to war, guys. I'm probably going to make these guys 40 combat. What? So let's just duplicate. Yeah, let's not duplicate yet. Yeah, I'm going to get up to 50 army XP, probably. You guys are okay, not great. The tanks are looking okay. Well, I put APCs on them. Wow. Ah, a little crazy there, huh? Go and go home. I think 213 is pretty good for now, since we're probably not even going to really get to our naval doctrine too much. Go home as well so we can stock up on some fuel. That would be good. 51% stability, not bad. Not bad if I do say so myself. Machine assisted encryption, cool. Do it again. Oh, wait, what? Wait, what? Oh, more political power? Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's actually really stupid. So, we'll come back to that one when we have more political power. Let's do blue skies over China. Let's do contest American dominance. Two tigers cannot stay out long on the same mountain. We have always known this. As the U.S. Glide, fleets glide across Chinese territorial waters, we're constantly reminded of it, too. For now, we have no choice but to accept their presence as a given, but this will only spur us on in our efforts to truly contest American might. Our carrier capabilities are sadly decades away from actualization, but the development of a battleship cruiser fleet will keep our force... Projection relevant and hopefully will counter their air superiority that carriers bring to the table. This will disturb our so-called friends in Washington, but I have no choice. China's destiny as a global power lies in the balance. I did not realize that I had to keep 100 political power. I kind of don't like that. Why can't you just say have minus 100 political power? That seems a little bit nicer. Uh, duh. If you have that. UK recognizes the Delhi government. Well, good for them. You, know, you guys just train in general. Better engineers. Let's grab some... More recon. Why not? More recon. It's almost 1962. Well, not 1962, but 1960. That's a good thing. Some more uh, civilian factories, yes. More industry. Good, good. What were we, 140 earlier? 150? We're at 140 earlier. Now we're 142. Not bad. Slowly getting bigger and bigger. Wow, Germany's falling behind France. That's kind of sad. Not going to lie. It's a little sad. Oh, well. Oh, well. Good for them. So now I'm just going to save up political power. I'm not going to spend any more of it. Didn't realize that earlier. Kingdom of Eng Italy. What do you have? I almost said England, but Italy. Young democracy. Not looking bad. Not looking bad. Come on, USSR. Kill the enemies off. How strong are they? Almost a million of manpower. Not bad. We've got probably a good amount of fuel. Army-wise, up to 56 divisions. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, yeah, you might as well do that. Why not? Mm, Navy, they're probably not, they're a little better than us. A little better, maybe. Maybe not, actually. Maybe not. Hmm. Ship's looking good. Not bad. Make the refinery. And we made it, and we still have minus 12. Hmm. If that's the case, go ahead and start making some dockyards, because we can. Some dockyards, some civilian factories, that'd be kind of nice. Not bad. Actually, how many do how many dockyards do we have? Oh my goodness, we need so many. We need so many. Just American dominance, and then we'll do the other one. Ooh, not Chinese power struggle, that's good. And we'll come back over here. And do government intervention when we are good and ready. There we go. Go back to doing that, government intervention. So next up, protect Asian maritime trade. We get some convoys. Naval supremacy. That might be a really good idea since it's almost 1960 and we could probably get another thing there. Research bonus for sub-models. Machine-assisted encryption. Very nice. Let's do some passive defense. You never know what might pop up and around here. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, finally, good, they're gone. So if I do this, we get a military factory. We push for domestic assembly. It's not bad. Battle for air supremacy, ba bomber focus, targeting bombers or targeted bombing. Not bad. Napalm incendiary bombs, I kind of like that. Swept wing planes, okay. Air, air missiles. Introduce helicopters, that's not bad. So we can't go do import subs, that's fine. Trade interdiction. Reintroduce carriers. Battleship missile systems, capital ship attack. Expand the ROC Naval Academy. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I just wish it was just a little bit more. And what is this? Executive Committee in Disarray? I mean, I'll come back and play as China someday. But only when uh, there's maybe a little bit more going on in the world, just overall. Uh, I know to do that, though, you have to lose the Vietnam War. So, And I didn't really want to lose a war on our first campaign playing as China. So that's why I did it like that. Artillery looking not too bad. Minus 41, 44, not bad at all. Uh, passive defense, cool. I'm gonna go and oh, we could uh, we could edit that over here. Let's get rid of the military police and exchange it for engineers. There you go. Cool. Let's keep doing this. Got some more passive defense, maybe. Yes, yes, please. Some more, please. That'd be very, very good. We only get 27,000 people a month. That's all. Just just to join the army. That's all. Come on, guys. Win down here. Win. Win. Actually, are they united in anything? No. Oh, and Iraq is in... The Toronto Accords, of course. Of course they would be. Of course. Because why not? Alleviating poverty. How great. Oh, we'll be removed. Oh, okay. That's not bad. I mean, that doesn't look very good, but it removed by early... By the end of January. Which, in itself, is not very bad. Five more army XP? Don't mind if we do. Uh, actually, I'll have you guys... Well, I'm gonna actually separate you, probably. That'd probably be a good thing for him here on out. You are not cavalry, and Wang Yao Wu? I'll go Huang Ji. That'd be good. So I want you guys to train, too. I want more army XP. So we can make our armies even better, 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 better. Upgrade. Uh, Fortress Buster. Uh, we can do Scavenger. We'll do that one. Because why not? And we shall do next and end this episode with stop printing. The first step to controlling the value of currency is its supply, and the biggest contributor to money supply in the domestic economy is, as ever, the government. The widespread practice of local printing to bankrupt to supply bank loans, domestic payments to agencies and payrolls must end, but this alone is not enough. After a critical examination of our banking system, our financial ministry has issued a recommendation to force through prompt payments of, of debt at a, as an appointed date. This move is well nigh guaranteed to cause problems and has already created mild bubbles in the business confidence as people whisper up foreclosures and sudden freezes in liquidity. It will not be pleasant, but the necessary is seldom pleasant, and we are forsworn to do what is necessary for the nation. Get better at trade deal opinion action trade deal opinion factor and more cap and you know what? I lied we're gonna do one more focus after that one just because I want to see if anything else happens or just just to get through it hold on so we need a 99 political power to do that but it didn't take away political power I'll take away 30 but that's not much let's see requires okay so we can spend our political power if we really wanted to I want to go to extensive conscription so I can get to total mobilization but obviously we can't get there can I replace these guys uh Construction speed is not bad. Okay, I think I can actually. Huh. So we lose efficiency gain and construction speed, but we gain 5% more consumer goods. Resource and construction speed. Resource efficiency gain actually goes up, and we can build civilian factories a little bit faster. So I think that's a better, all. This is a better guy overall. Recon companies, those, those are nice. Drop tanks are nice. Let's grab some flamethrowers so they get a little more soft attack. You know what? You know what? Let's do double flamethrowers. Who else can ever say they research double flamethrowers at the same time? I'm sure someone can. More political power, nice. Uh, who else do we have here? More political power, less division organization, Prince of Terror. Uh, no. No. Eh, it's not bad. Stability, yeah, I like the stability. Man of the people. So you lose point two political power. Well, we'll save that for later. So you give us more point one political power overall. Um, that's not bad. Backroom backstabber. Oh, nice. The Republic of India is fully done. There you go. Do those two as well. Cool. It was back. Kind of is gone. Dream, dreamy intellectual. Wow, that is uh okay. Benevolent father. That looks like it hurts us quite a bit. 
More political power gain, but not really. More army XP. Ooh, more army XP gain. Every Ooh, look at this. Political power and resource efficiency gain. Wait, hold on. Selling so workhorses seem really good. Stop printing. 0.15, plus 10%. Plus 0.5, one time. That seems really good. Rebuilding the trust. So, as the country re reels from the temporary liquidity crisis we have generated, our ministry is proposing an accelerated program to recapture consumer investor confidence. From Shenyang to Guangzhou, we will introduce spectacular demand side programs to spur consumption and reinvestment into the economy. Local governments will build bridges, roads, and housing blocks and pay businesses to do so. If the private sector is too afraid to invest, then the nation must lead the way. Our programs must also target the unstable incomes of much of China's working class. Through parallel programs designed to mediate commodity pricing, we will begin to rebuild the shattered wallets of a swath or swath of the Chinese population. It will be extremely expensive and it will be painful for our already strained coffers, but in the end it will prove to be very, very beneficial. But I'm going to end today's episode there because I want to know your opinion whether I should go to war using comms commands with maybe the Republic of Korea, other Southeast or just, just Asian states like Kashmir or Afghanistan again and India. But let me know in the comments below about that. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Uh, you know what? By this time, you probably already are subscribed to me, so I'm going to not ask for subscriptions. And by this time, you have already made the choice whether you want to join my Discord or not. So, regardless, hope you have a great, great rest of your day.